Speaking of things we don't know whether or not they're going to be good or not, you said it. We have a Halo series coming to Paramount+. Plus. And again, for those that are going, what's Paramount+. Plus? It's CBS All Access after they realized CBS All Access is a stupid name if you're trying to reach more than just the people that watch NCIS. Um, <laughs> Paramount Plus has apparently taken the reins to the Halo series from, I think it was Showtime? Somebody else was developing the Halo series, but they are just dragging their feet, so Paramount Plus comes along and scoops it up. I have often thought that a Halo series would be fantastic! 10 or 15 years ago! Um... I've never been the biggest Halo fan. I think, Josh, you've played more Halo than me. I can almost guarantee you. For anybody that wants to ever beat me in a game, no matter what, just pick Halo. And even if you're an angry chimp with stump hands, as they said in the Honest Game trailer, you will still beat me because I'm god-awful in Halo because I think I've clocked maybe six hours in total in my entire life playing Halo. That being said, I've always understood the appeal of why this would be a great movie or series because it's got this great lore, a great aesthetic. Uh, Master Chief has this great iconic look. Even if you've never played a single video game, you know exactly who that is. You're just like, boom. Um, But again, this is so, so late to the party. And especially after that... uh, what was it, Halo Infinite reveal? People are not having the best taste of Halo in their mouth right now. So, yeah, Mr. Halo, please bring some form of optimism here. <laughs> wow, Mr. Halo, okay, okay. Literally anybody's Mr. Halo compared to yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're talking to the kid who... Uh... I think two or three, either one of my birthdays and one of my one of my brother's birthdays was we just had people over and we had three projectors up and we just played a LAN, had a huge Halo LAN party, which is like insane. But I mean, you don't do those these days anymore because you just you play, have internet. You, yeah, you have internet. Like, why would you? Why would you do that? Um, even though that would be that would be a lot of fun. Um, but <laughs> so. I'm going to try to spin this as positive as I can. Um, With the new Halo game out, the thought process I can see, and honestly, from a business perspective, this is not a bad thought process. With the new Halo game coming out, even though the reception has been weird, um, hoping that that kind of pumps some new life into the Halo kind of buzz the halo craze a little bit and they're like hey you and and then so then the game games comes out sells millions of copies people love it or hate it or whatever as halo games do um and then paramount can be like right on the back of it oh hey guys by the way there's a that halo series is coming out like a week or two weeks after the release of the game oh look at that Boom, you loved Halo. Now watch a show on Halo. That ooh, that's so much fun. Cuz that Which works not, so well for Dragon Ball. I mm, okay, but we're not going to talk about Dragon Ball because that they never made a live action movie about Dragon Ball. Just like they never made a live action Mortal Kombat movie or a sequel or, or a live action Last Airbender or uh, anyway, um <laughs> but the thing that gives me uh, a positive like hopeful vibe about this is Forward Until Dawn. I don't know if you have ever seen it. Is that the uh, fan film on YouTube? It's not a fan film. What's it's the, actually there is one was, that I've seen on YouTube. I think, but it is so okay. So this is what for those that don't know, I'm trying to remember which Halo it is, but it was produced by a like. Ha, I mean, it's like legit produced by by a studio. It's not mm. a fan film. Mm-hmm. Um. And was kind of made in tandem with the upcoming. Uh, this is the reason I say Paramount is doing what what they're doing because it's been done before with Halo. Um, Forward Until Dawn was made before. Jeez, oh, I want to say Halo Six. I think I don't remember, but like basically, it was it was made was done by you know. Marines who were like little kids that were, you know, training to be Marines, whatever. And it's like their planet, uh, they don't know about 
Master Chief or the aliens. They think they're fighting um, like a riot, like farmer riots and stuff like that. And then of course it turns out that there's aliens and Master Chief. They meet Master Chief and all this other stuff, and it's really, really fun and it's really cool. Um, if I think it's on, because okay, so that's what happened was like week by week they would release one episode leading up to the release of the game. So you would get uh, it on YouTube. It wasn't on... Because streaming services weren't really a thing mm -hmm. that, when it was being released. So you'd wait every... I think it was like every Thursday or something, which is a weird day to release something in the week. But like gaming-wise, it makes sense because there's not a lot... Thursday's right before the weekend. It's you know right right there at the, begin, the, the end of the week, the work week. So it's like it made sense. Anyway, but so... It was like the, the series finale happened, and then I think either a week or a week, week or two, yeah, it was like two weeks later, the new game released, and in the between that week, they they announced that the main character from Forward Until Dawn would actually be in the game. So it was like, it was like, it was super cool. I'm not saying that's, a, but like that to me, that shows that if anything, and I don't know who's producing the Halo games nowadays, but they are at least is it still aware. Bungie? Of, I think it's still Bungie, but they're at least aware of their cultural significance and how they can pull in a lot of people just based off of the nostalgia alone. So I mean, if you haven't che checked out Ford Until Dawn, I would. I think it's on Netflix. I'd have to look. I haven't watched it in forever. It's like five episodes or something like that. So. But um, check that out. But it's – I'm obviously still wary because like, you, like you're saying, like 10 years ago, I think this would be a big deal. But now I don't know. I think – I don't – I never want to say the nostalgia is run out on something. But gaming franchises is one of those things that people can look back to on like very fondly. But the fan base might have – moved on so to speak you know what i mean they yeah they'll, they'll still love it but they're playing other things like mm -hmm. when halo i remember when halo came out it was either halo or call of duty in terms of big mm -hmm. multiplayer shooters nowadays you have a lot more options for that so i don't feel like there's one specific everybody is playing this game like when halo came out that was a cultural phenomenon and i don't besides as much as i hate to say it besides maybe fortnite and that's a younger generation. I don't know if there's one single game that like really wraps everybody up like Halo used to. You could be like, we're doing a Titanfall series. As cool as that is, that's not gonna have the hype and the buzz of like a Halo at its prime. But again, if you're in the Halo community, that's awesome. I don't think Halo is in its prime anymore, and it hasn't been in yeah. quite a while. Um, but to think more positively about this, if you we're Paramount Plus, and you had total creative freedom on this, Josh. Who are you tapping to more or less head this project? Because it feels like every big name director has either been in or out of this project at one point or another. Last I heard, Spielberg was producing it. Um, but if you had full creative freedom, who would you have like be the lead guy for this? Um. Okay. Let's see. So you're gonna want somebody with that is not afraid of the weirdness of space adventures. You're also not, you're going to want somebody who can do action and gunfights fairly well. Um, what about James Wan? Hmm. That could be fun. I mean, see, after seeing what he did with Aquaman, um, that could be cool. That, that would be like creature design, having the covenant, like as creature designed by James Wan? Are you kidding me? Like let's those guys would look so good and having like a stylish gunfight as opposed to what sometimes we get, which is just running and gunning, which is kind of what Halo is, but it would still be interesting to see Master Chief be Master Chief, where he's like when he when you do things that like you do in the game, like oh hi, I'm gonna super jump, throw a plasma grenade, and then shoot a guy shoot a, a a grunt with a shotgun on my way down, like like it was just to see those kinds of things. I feel that maybe James Wan would be a good choice. I'm trying to think. 
I, unfortunately, the first name that came to mind was uh, uh, Zack Snyder, and I was like, no, 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 no. I don't think he'd be a bad choice. Uh, he wouldn't be the reason, worst choice. For some reason, the top name, even though I haven't seen him do a lot of action stuff, but I've seen him do a lot of sci-fi stuff, would be Alex Garland, who did Ex yeah. Machina. And yeah. I feel like he did Annihilation, too, I think. But, like, he seems like nowadays the go-to guy for sci-fi, and I feel like yes. he would bring the intensity that would be needed for Halo. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the franchise well enough to just be like, okay, I think this would be the ideal fit. But I want this to be good because I want the trend of bad video game adaptations to go in the other direction. Because video games nowadays are such excellent storytelling vehicles. Um, like I said, the story wasn't that great for Miles Morales, but it's still leaps and bounds better than what we've had in the past for video game narratives and like mm. we've come so far and i think it's frustrating to see so many times that movies fail at that and people are like well it's because you're not playing a movie i'm like that's not it both forms yeah. have narratives and if your narrative is solid for both it still works so well yeah, and that's the thing too because i don't know if you keep up with a lot of the newer some of the newer games but like um little nightmares too i'm not going to spoil anything but i watched a playthrough and there's no dialogue hmm. in the entire game. There's grunts and stuff like that, but like there's no dialogue the entire game. So and like Lego Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> but cinematic masterpiece you, there. Dude, it is don't even that is a cinematic masterpiece. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm real excited for the Skywalker saga. Whenever that <laughs> feels like coming out. But Little Nightmares told a whole story in I think about a three or four hour game that without any dialogue. Just through ambiance and restrictive controls and stuff like that. So it's like saying like, oh, you, you don't play a video, you, you you don't play a movie. It doesn't make sense because unless you Telltale games. <laughs> yeah, like it's move. It's not this. It's the same. It's still a narrative structure. You still have to tell a compelling story, and you mm -hmm. still have to get your audience to care. If, and I think especially with video games it, it's akin to having a, a, a book movie you mm -hmm. have a fan base for that book and if you don't i don't want to say feed that fan base but like I am number four. if you don't do service to the love and the and yeah the love that some of these fan bases have for the the, the story and for the characters then we're not going to be interested in it like it's one of those like you can't it's a very, very weird world. Like comics, comic book movies, you can change all, most things about them as long as they make sense. Whereas like books, sorry, yeah, books and um, video games, you really can't, like, it's not like socially acceptable to change like anything because nerds are crazy. Mm. Yes. <laughs> We're not that we know anything about that. Last yeah, thought before we get into our main that. discussion.